Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Bernadette Almans, and in this presentation, Anna Nieto and I will discuss the strategic action, lead and invest. Let's start with a brief reminder that lead and invest is the first of five strategic actions described in the nurturing care framework. Lead and invest addresses three teams. The first is governance, how to coordinate decision makers at national and local levels as they try to develop and achieve national policy objectives. The second theme is planning, how to translate these policy objectives into concrete activities. And the third is finance, how to fund the expansion and strengthening of services and how to add interventions in an equitable and sustainable way working through the appropriate ministries. Before we delve deeper into these themes, a quick reminder. Early childhood development is defined as children's cognitive, physical, language, motor, social and emotional development between conception and age eight. To support early childhood development, interventions are needed across the life course and in a continuum of care. The Nurturing Care Framework summarizes actions that are most relevant in the first three years of life. It puts a strong emphasis on the role of health and nutrition, as these sectors have an important reach and contribution to make during this time. When children grow older, other sectors become important, such as education, and take responsibility for early childhood development in addition to parents. Let's look at governance. In working with government and partners, frequently asked questions are how to create political will, facilitate multi-sectoral collaboration, is there a need for one policy or many policies, how to generate investment, and how to sustain momentum. Here are some steps that have shown to be effective. First, engage all relevant stakeholders in dialogue from the beginning. This will help to hear different voices and build a common understanding. In raising awareness, use scientific data to illustrate the importance of early childhood development for human capital and illustrate the cost of inactions. Also refer to national commitments, such as made to the Sustainable Development Goals or the Global Strategy for Women's, Children and Adolescent Health to justify investment and find evidence about the current situation in the country and discuss policies and strategies that are already available and can serve as entry points for doing more. All this will provide the background for building a common vision, define goals and set targets. And that can be the basis for formulating or updating a national policy for ECD that informs the role of all relevant sectors and stakeholders. Here are three examples of how countries that have made progress in addressing early childhood development have set up governance structures and coordination mechanism. The first is high level leadership, meaning coordination at the level of the president's or the prime minister's office for a whole of government approach. The second is intersectoral leadership, where the leadership is given in one sector to coordinate actions across multiple sectors. The third pertains to sector specific leadership, meaning leadership within a sector to bring different units together and work together to demonstrate results and facilitate the engagement with other sectors. Now let's have a look at planning. Frequently asked questions for this theme are, is there a need for one plan or many plans? Who is responsible? Is it the role of the national level? What's the role of the local level? And what are attributes of a good plan? Steps that have shown to be effective are, do not wait for a national policy to be in place. Effectively, work done by different sectors and experience of good practice is often a catalyst for developing a national policy. 
but as you will use the nurturing care framework to strengthen actions to bring all relevant sectors and stakeholders together and plan together. Involve stakeholders not only at national level, but also at the local level. We now see that in multiple settings, it's municipal and local leaders that are taking responsibility to drive the agenda. Knowing your current situation is important, not only to understand the gaps, but also to identify the opportunities for stronger action. Consensus can be achieved when each of the stakeholders have a good understanding of what needs to be done and how they can contribute to it. Of course, setting realistic and measurable targets is essential for driving the agenda. Targets must be set for each of the components of nurturing care as progress is needed in all of them to eventually culminate in improved development outcomes in early childhood. And as you are planning, be prepared to work in cycles. Experience shows that to develop feasible, scalable and sustainable implementation strategies, it's useful to start small, to monitor, learn and adjust. And throughout the process, it's of course important to keep every stakeholder to account and regular and transparent communication holds the key to achieving that. The three principles of remember, strengthen and add are important to keep in mind. No country will be starting from scratch, as almost all governments have made commitments to the SDGs and work is in progress that is relevant for early childhood development through nurturing care. So remember to continue to invest in relevant interventions, to strengthen services so that they reach the whole of the population, especially the most vulnerable families and children, and add those interventions that are needed for more holistic support for young children and their caregivers, such as for responsive caregiving and early learning activities. To illustrate how some countries have been working with the evidence presented thus far, here is an example from Ethiopia. The 2016 Lancet series provided an incentive for the government to do more for ECD. Orientation meetings were held and in 2018, an ECD technical working group was established. Learning visits were conducted, followed by briefings of the highest authorities in the countries. And at the end of 2018, a national sensitization meeting was held on the nurturing care framework. This led to the establishment of an ECD research advisory council, as well as assessments in health, education and protection sectors of how they could support nurturing care. Following capacity building on responsive caregiving and early learning in 2020, a national ECD and education policy framework was finalized, followed by a national health strategic plan for ECD and strengthening of services started. These steps have been elaborated in greater detail in a country brief that is available on the Nurturing Care website. We encourage you to read this and other briefs to get more inspiration of what can be done and how for governance and planning. A key element of the lead and invest pillar of the nurturing care framework is financing. Here we're grappling with very complex questions, including how can we bring new resources into this agenda, but also how can we make sure that existing resources are used efficiently and that are actually supporting the needs of the most vulnerable children and families? How can we support and promote budget coordination among the different sectors that provide services to children? All those questions are addressed in the nurturing care handbook and also in UNICEF's Global Resource Guide on Public Financing for ECD, which have a lot of recommendations and country examples. In the presentation today, I would aim to summarize some of those key recommendations. Some of the key steps that have shown to be effective when we try 
to grapple with the questions that I just presented to you is to start by understanding the politics of financing for ECD and understanding what are the public financial management obstacles that we need to tackle. Uh, it is key to get a better understanding of the political economy and the fiscal space around ECD, understand how the ECD budget is formulated, what are the key sectors that are involved, who are the influential decision makers, and who could be likely champions for change, and most importantly, what would be feasible in that specific country and in that specific county. The second step is based on that uh, foundational information and understanding of the overall system, start conducting evidence-based and, and targeted advocacy. Here, a key message is that um, we need to start using the language of finance when we approach the public finance decision makers, as many of them are not going to be speaking our language, which is the language of ECD, of the language of health or the language of nutrition. So how can we start creating the right evidence and the right and use the right language to win the buy-in of these key public finance decision makers? Some of the key pieces of information that usually resonate with them include providing them with public expenditure tracking um, information, which means letting them know how much are we already spending on ECD services, and then provide them with different options for gradual expansion of services. So this becomes more feasible and it could be actually be seen as something that could fit within the existing fiscal space in that specific country. It is also very important to strengthen financing across all levels of the system, especially in countries that have devolved or decentralized services. Uh, it is important to support subnational budgeting processes and build understanding among the local government's finance staff on the importance of nurturing care so they can in turn demand more resources for that agenda and ensure the effective utilization of those resources once they get them. Another key piece of the puzzle is to ensure that we use the sectoral budget plans to include nurturing care related services and add-ons that are needed in order to make existing services more nurturing. We can start by identifying the type of ECD services for which financing is needed in terms of the coverage targets and quality standards. And then we can move to the second phase, which is to start costing the add-ons that are needed to make those services more nurturing, especially when we're trying to embed responsive care and early learning practices. In that case, key questions would be what additional staff time is needed to have longer counseling sessions and more targeted sessions with parents? Uh, how can we schedule those changes? What are the new job aids or the training costs that are involved? Once we have that information at hand, it's very important to then compare it with how much has already been spent, including the budgetary and not public spending. That would help us determine how big is that financing gap and start moving us into the next step of the discussions, which is considering all the potential sources of funding to tackle that gap. Finally, it is very important to work in coordination with different government bodies and sectors in order to promote more coordination across sectors and across level of government. It is not enough to look for new resources. It's very important that we use this as an opportunity to also identify gaps and overlaps in spending and see how we can all together work to increase efficiency gains in the system. In order to support the great country level work in terms of advocacy, the Nurturing Care Working Group had recently produced a toolkit that aims to support those great evidence-based advocacy efforts. It includes key messages, case studies, country profiles, and many more tools that would support those efforts. Please um, go to the website nurturingcare.org advocacy toolkit to benefit from that resource. In addition to the advocacy toolkit that I just described, wanted to also share that in the coming months, we will be able to share with all of you a cost of inaction online plug and play tool that is currently being tested in three countries, Brazil, Bulgaria, and Madagascar. This tool aims to empower local advocates and champions in order to easily calculate what is the cost of inaction of not investing in ECD services in terms of future earnings. 
Finally, wanted to summarize what are the key signs of progress in terms of the lead and invest pillar of the nurturing care framework. It includes having a national coordination mechanism in place, having champions for nurturing care across multiple sectors, having comprehensive policy objectives that are adopted and addressing the early years, having a national roadmap or a strategy for ECD that has been developed but also costed, having also sector-specific plans that are updated, costed and are fostering adequate and efficient spending. And finally, being able to track and understand what is happening in terms of government spending and how can we continue to foster coordination across planning and budgeting across all sectors. Thank you so much for your time today.